In this video, I'm going to show you how to auto create subtasks in Jira. Now I'm going to show you two different methods for doing this, both of which I think you're really going to like. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of the video. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below in the description so you can find my merch store, my paid courses, and of course the links to our sponsors for this video. Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing in this particular video. So every once in a while, you want to create the same type of subtasks for a very specific issue. So for example, let's assume that your team's working on a story and this story is a repeatable story that shows up every other sprint or so. And that same story always contains like the same five steps. And so you could, if you wanted to, go back in time, remember what those five stories were, and then manually create them. Or you can follow along with this video and I'm gonna show you two different methods for achieving this task in a very autonomous way and Jira is going to do it on our behalf. So let me show you how to achieve this via automation rules. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website in-app widget or confluence for internal collaboration make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial so first i'm going to pick my sample kanban project and then i'm going to go down to project settings from within project settings i'm going to click on automation and i'm going to set it up here now a little disclaimer starting november 1st the automation rules in jira are going to be changing so depending on the tier that you're on you may or may not be paying more for your automation rules. So make sure that when you are using automation rules, you have a very good intention of why they exist because starting November 1st, your bills might get a little bit higher if you run out of your limits. But this should be something that is important and I do recommend that it only runs when it's needed. And I'm gonna explain those things to you throughout this video. So first way of making this automation rule is we're going to first dismiss that November 1st uh, message, but we're going to create a rule. And now the way that I recommend that you do this in order to make sure that you don't hit those limits, but it's a little bit more annoying is I recommend that your trigger be a manual trigger. So you're going to want to scroll down and find your quick actions here and click on this manual trigger. And what this is going to allow us to do is essentially this rule is only going to run if you click a button in the UI and I'm going to show you where that button is at. But I think that this works better because it's going to allow us to only run the rule when we actually need it so that it's not always running. And I think you're going to like that a little bit more. So we're going to leave this option here for literally anybody can log it in, but you can restrict this. So if you wanted only your scrum masters to run it or your product owners, that's totally doable too. But I'm just going to leave it with the defaults here and I'm going to click save. Then comes the fun part. So then I'm going to check and see, is the issue that I'm on a story? Now you could do this however you want. You can do a is one of. So if you want to do it for your stories, tasks and bugs, it's all up to you. But for the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to simply show you, is this issue type uh, a story? And if it is, I am going to proceed with the next step. So I'm going to hit save there. This is going to help limit the number of mistakes that you make with if you accidentally run this rule manually. And so essentially, if you run it on an Epic, which doesn't really have subtasks, it's not going to run and it's not going to give you a bad experience by adding subtasks to the Epic. So we're going to basically just zone in on the scope here and basically tell it, hey, if I'm a story, when I click the button, then I want you to proceed. Otherwise, just ignore it. Maybe it was an accident. But again, this is all up to you, right? You guys get to architect it the way you want. I'm just telling you it's good. It's always a good practice, specifically with automation rules, to put in some sort of a safety, some sort of a condition, so that you're not always just running these rules very sporadically. Because again, starting November 1st, you're going to start getting built for these. So you want to build smart automation rules. You want to put some logic, some conditions, so that these things don't just fire off the entire day. Otherwise, again, you're going to be maybe surprised with a rather high Atlassian bill. So that's the best practice here. We're going to want to make sure that we're at least limiting our scope so that we're only doing this for stories. But again, you do you. Next, once we have this, 
we are then going to create an issue. And so we're going to click on the create issue button here. We are going to leave it in the same project, but we're not going to do the same issue type. We're going to change our issue type and we're going to make it of a sub type subtask. And our parent issue is going to be the trigger issue. Okay. Because we don't really know so specifically since we're doing it manually, what the current issue is, but we are for sure going to know the trigger issue because we clicked into it there. So we're going to want the parent to be the trigger issue. And then from there, you're just going to literally just like type in whatever you want. So this is step one, you can put a description and then the rules of just doing automation rules come into play. So if you wanted to add another field, you can add, you can assign them to somebody, you can add due dates, whatever you want here. And then you hit save. And that is the first subtask. The, if you want to do another one, then you basically do the same step. You do another component, you do then, you create an issue, you change the issue type to be the subtask, you change the thing to be the trigger, and then again you do step two, and then another more text in here. So once you hit save, you're going to want to give it a name. And so we're going to do this like auto create subtasks one, and then I'm going to turn it on. But now I'm going to show you how this actually works inside of Jira. So check this out. So inside of Jira, you're just going to go back to your project and you're going to want to open up a story. When you open up a story and because we did this as a manual rule, you have your actions up here in the top right corner. You're going to click on that and you're going to see that you now have this auto create subtask. I'll click on that. Notice that I don't currently have any subtasks. I do have a linked issue here, but no subtasks. I'm going to click on this. And then give it a second or two. It does take a couple of seconds here for the rule to execute. You can always go and check out the auto locks in case it doesn't run. But as you can see down here in the bottom, your automation is in progress. Sometimes I find that you just have to refresh your screen. So I'm just going to do that real quickly. And now when I open up my story, you'll notice that I have my step one and step two issues. And it only worked here. It only did it here. And now that's how I can automatically create these items. Now this is the manual way, again, the, it's a little annoying because you have to remember to go click that actions. But if you wanted to make this a little bit more autonomous, maybe you wanted to just have this thing run automatically when you create a story. I don't recommend you go down this route because automating things is cool, but too much automation can be a problem. And so just, I want you to be smart about this when you're thinking about how you're gonna do this, but let me show you a slightly more advanced and a method that is completely hands off, right? So once you set this rule, you're going to be able to forget about it and it's just automatically going to happen in the background. And so let me show you everything's the same except the trigger. So let's go look at the triggers here. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website in-app widget or Confluence for internal collaboration. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. So instead of going to my auto create subtask one, I'm going to make a copy of it because I want to keep that old one and I'm going to do like story auto create subtask one, hit save real quick. But before we hit publish, we want to change our trigger. We don't want this to be because I clicked the button. I want this to happen automatically. You have a couple different options, right? So. The way to think about this is, so maybe when an issue transitions into a specific status, then you want the subtask to show up, or maybe whenever you create a story, you want these issues to show up, or better yet, maybe on a story when a specific field is updated, so maybe when you add the fixed version, or maybe when you pull it into the sprint, that's when you want this issue to create the subtask. So I'm just going to show you a random just example here. So we're going to be listening for transition. So we're going to grab the when issues transitioned and we're going to go uh, whenever it enters to in progress. We're going to click on save. Again, we want to make sure we want to limit it to so whenever it's only a story. And then we're going to create the, st the, the subtask there. So we'll hit finish copy there. And then we're going to go back to our project. And we're going to grab a story that is in my backlog because I don't have any stories here. I'm going to move this story here. We're going to move it into the sprint. Accept the scope creep. And inside of my sprint, you'll notice that I have this. This is a story A. When I open it, notice that it doesn't have any subtasks. It does have linked issues, but no subtasks. But now when I move it to in progress, and again, I'm going to give it another second here, but I'm going to be able to open it up. 
and there they are. My step one, step two are automatically in there. And so this is another, again, totally hands off, just works automatically, right? So you get rid of that having to hit that manual button, which is a little bit annoying. But now the only drawback, right, the only con is that this is going to do it for every story whenever you move it to in progress and you may not want that. But I wanted to show you both methods so that you can pick whether you want to do it fully autonomous, keep in mind that there's going to be some annoyances there, or if you wanted to have a little bit more control and only run it manually and again, different annoyances there. But those are your two options. Those are the ways that I typically encourage teams to do it if they wanted to create these automatic subtasks. And of course, you can go up to about 60 of these subtasks in a single rule. And so keep that in mind that you don't have to just add two, you can add three, four, five, and then you can have a different sets of automation rules. Uh, maybe you want some for when you're going to add your testing. Maybe you want some for when you're going to do your validations, right? So you can have different rules that will add different types of subtasks uh, depending on how you want to do it. And also keep in mind that you can change this up, right? You can also do this so that you add stories to an epic and so on and so forth. So lots of different variations here, but I just wanted to give you a couple of options for a pretty popular a use case that I see teams encounter in Jira. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence for internal collaboration. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you smash that like button as that really does help out the algorithm. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button as well. And finally, don't forget to check out the merch store. Don't forget to check out all the links down below for the courses, for the sponsors and everything else. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So fight and fight.